So my best friend of 20 years recently got married and I thought to myself, this would be the perfect time to shoot a YouTube video. I mean, come on, when would there be another opportunity for me to use this setup right here? The RX100 Mark 7 and the Zhiyun Crane M2 to shoot a wedding. This setup right here looks like a complete joke. At the wedding, the guests were kind of looking at me funny because I was waving this around. I'm sure the photographers initially was like, what the f is this guy doing? But jokes on them because I got some cinematic bangers. So this issue is actually getting worse because I've been shooting weddings for about four years now, shooting other people's wedding, but I'm getting to the age where a lot of my own friends are getting married and I get invited not to shoot the wedding, but just to relax. But then I start twitching at the reception and the ceremony. I, I start freaking out. I'm like, is, is the audio recording? Am I hitting my 30 minute recording limit? Did I even press the record button? Why was my shot in focus? You can ask Vivian, it gets pretty annoying that I show up to these weddings where I'm supposed to relax, but I have a camera on me and I'm doing work even though my friends have their own photographers and videographers. But for this particular wedding, my best friend initially asked me to shoot his wedding, but I turned him down and said, no, I'd rather just relax and enjoy being there especially since I'm going to be in the wedding party as well. Yeah, that was a complete lie because I brought this, which I ended up having a lot of fun shooting his wedding because I wasn't pressured, because I wasn't hired, and I was getting a lot of creative shots with this right here. So because I wasn't paid for this wedding, why on earth did I title this video, I shot this wedding professionally with a point and shoot camera? Well, how I approached it was really professional, I still treat it like a job because I knew the types of shots that I wanted to get. I sort of went in with the plan and I was very aware of the wedding schedule. Plus, I didn't get in the way of a photographer. I told them like, look, you guys are here. You guys are actually getting paid to be here to shoot the wedding, to capture the memory. So please let me know if I ever get in the way. I'm just here to do a favor for my friend. And they were really chill about it. As the day went on, they started treating me like a fellow vendor. They even allowed me to have some time to shoot some uh, romantic poses of my best friend and his fiance. Well, I guess his wife now. And the final product that I delivered to my best friends is similar to what I would deliver to my paid clients. A wedding highlight film with an audio driven story with a licensed song from Musicbed. They're also getting their full ceremony, all the speeches, and the whole shebang through MediaZilla. The only difference is I only use this one setup as opposed to my regular five camera setup, three gimbals, two big lights, and a team of three. So in terms of how I approached it, I treat it as if I was getting paid. But who knows, maybe you disagree. Maybe you still think this is not considered professional. You think this is some clickbait bullshit. Debate it in the comments down below while I uh, enjoy this popcorn here as the uh, heated discussion goes on. Mm -hmm. Well, now that you're done debating in the comments down below, let me tell you about this amazing little setup right here. This really gave me a lot of creative freedom when I was shooting my friend's wedding because I never had to worry about another camera or another shooter. Even though there were many times where I catch myself thinking, oh man, it would be good to have like a reaction camera, a reactionary camera right here, or it'd be great to have a second cam running over there. But because I was shooting with this setup almost exclusively, it really forced me to maximize all the types of shots that I need to get and where to place this camera. And because this setup is so light, I never have to worry about breaking a sweat. Well, I broke a sweat from the heat, but not from using this. Believe it or not, this setup right here gets really tiring after an hour or two of using it. And that, at some point, I consider a pretty light setup. For those of you who don't know, the Sony RX100 Mark 7 is sort of advertised as the Mini A9. Well, I guess the, A, uh, the Mini A9 Mark II. Because it has very similar autofocus features like the A9 and it shoots 20 frames per second stills, but we're talking about video here today. So in terms of the video department, 
it has the brand new eye autofocus in video. This tiny little camera is capable of shooting 4K up to 30 frames per second, but I was shooting at 24 frames per second. In regards to slow motion, I was shooting either in 1080p 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second. Actually, I'm not sure if the A9 Mark II has picture profiles, but the RX100 Mark VII has all the picture profiles. It also has the zebra function, so I never have to worry about overexposing my highlights. It has the cinematic crop marks, and it has a mic jack, which, to be honest with you, I didn't really use a whole lot. And what I really enjoyed about the Sony RX100 Mark VII is the 24 to 200 millimeter zoom, which allowed me to get a lot of interesting shots. Because it can go up to 200 millimeter, it really gives off a different look and vibe when you use it. I was able to get these scenic shots like this boat right here and this bird flying by. Right here, right here, right here. I got it. And it allowed me to get the reactionary shots of the couple while sitting across from them as they were reacting to the speeches. So the biggest question you guys probably have is, did this camera overheat at all? I mean, I shot the entire wedding, the whole 12 hours I was there with this camera and this, this, thing, just, this thing just died because it just ran out of battery. <laughs> The question is, that did this camera overheat during the wedding? And the answer is no. I was able to record this whole 21 minute ceremony without it shutting down and the overheating sign did not come on. And this is us being in an enclosed incubating environment. It was pretty warm in there. But the RX100 Mark VII survived that. I think there are a couple of reviews out there that claims that this camera can record 4K up to an hour. And this is compared to the previous versions of the RX100, like the 4 and the 5. Those can record 4K for up to 5 minutes twice before it having to shut off and cool itself down. The trick to recording longer than five minutes is that you have to turn on this auto power temperature thing on your camera. I remember watching Brandon Lee's video on the Crane M2, how he really loves the gimbal, but he did not like the fact that the RX100 Mark V kept overheating and shutting down. So Brandon, if you're watching this bra, get the RX100 Mark VII. So I shot this wedding about a month ago, and the fact that it just barely died after a 12, 13 hour shoot day, and the fact that I'm taking like two hours to record this video where it dies now, it's pretty good. So you guys might have several other big questions for me about this camera, like did not having uh, the ND filter or the f1.8 aperture on this camera hinder my shoot in any way. Now a lot of people consider not having those things a crippled functionality of the RX100 Mark VII, and they're comparing this to the RX100 Mark V, where that camera has an ND filter and it has a 24 to 70 millimeter lens with an f1.8 to 2.8 aperture. The RX100 Mark VII has a 24 to 200 millimeter, but the f-stop is from f2.8 to f4.5. So let's start off with the ND filter first. Not having ND filter is not the biggest deal breaker for me. I still went out and bought this camera. For me, this camera is just more for fun, more for just casual vlogging, casual video making. I'm not too concerned about getting the best cinematic settings for my shots. But also, this particular wedding didn't really require me to even use an ND filter because for the most part, we were indoors. And for the short time that we were in harsh sunlight where we were capturing the romantic poses of my friends out by the beach, I was shooting in 120 frames per second slow motion. So having that high shutter speed helps. Plus, I wasn't afraid to really push to f-stop. I was pretty much shooting between f9 to f11 for these scenes right here. Sure, it would have been nice to have the ND filter, but again, not the biggest deal breaker. Now let's talk about the aperture though. So, not having the faster aperture also didn't bother me until it got to the night portion of the wedding. That's when the footage started falling apart. But that's understandable, we are shooting with a one inch sensor point and shoot camera, not with these bigger A7 III full frame cameras where it has better low light sensitivity. But it would have been nice to have the 1.8 aperture for scenes like that. I ended up having to bust out my little tiny light and just shine it at my couple and just try to like film their first dance and their cake cutting and the other stuff that happened during the reception. I guess another thing that not having the 1.8 aperture on this camera is that I don't have enough bokeh in this wedding video, which honestly, I don't think my friends really care all that much. In fact, I don't think any couples would ding you for not having enough bokeh in their wedding videos. Honestly, it's probably just you guys who would give me flack for not having enough bokeh in my video. Leave me alone. 
Now, I'm not writing off anybody who would value having the ND filter and the faster 1.8 aperture on this camera. I'm just saying for me, it wasn't the biggest deal breaker. I knew what I was buying into when I was getting the camera. Plus, it wasn't very applicable to the situation that I was in. Honestly, I was glowing from all the amazing shots that I was getting with this setup. That and I was glowing from the alcohol that I was drinking. So let's talk about the Zhuyun Crane M2. I've always believed that Zhuyun excels at making these lightweight, portable, single-handed grip gimbals. This thing is tiny, compact, and super unobtrusive. Except for me, I was super intrusive. I was literally just waving this camera at everyone that I see, especially when they're dancing. And this thing lasted for about 12 hours at the wedding. You guys just saw it just now. It just like died right here when I was making the video, but this is after a month from shooting that wedding and not recharging it for that amount of time. And speaking of battery, I think the Crane M2 can also charge the RX100 at the same time. I can confirm that it's working, but I didn't actually have it for the wedding, which would have saved me from having to go through five different batteries. But then again, that would mean shorter gimbal life, so you kind of have to pick and choose your battle. And when you do connect the cable to the gimbal, you can actually control the recording and the zoom function of the camera. But again, I didn't really do that because I was too busy fiddling around with the autofocus settings on the camera, and I would just hit the record button on the camera and use the zoom rocker right here. So it wasn't necessary for me, but it can do it if you want it to. And this function is like the bigger Zhuyun gimbals. It has the pan follow mode, the full follow mode, the lock mode, the POV mode, the vertical mode, whatever mode you choose to use, it's, it's there on this tiny little thing as well. The Crane M2 also features a quick release system that allows you to mount and dismount your camera extremely quickly, which I thought is a very nice touch. And they have a locking mechanism to protect the motor when you put the gimbal in your bag. But what I really like is that they included the quarter 20 attachment right here, which I think is for accessories like a mic, but I use it to hold my little bottom screw for the camera so I don't lose it. This has become my de facto personal vacation video vlogging setup, but you guys know that's both already because I'm still gonna bring my big boys out because hashtag team too much gear. Aside from that, let's talk about the mic that I used really quickly. Yes, I did use an external audio solution for this wedding. I mean, that adds to another reason why I consider this a professional wedding shoot with a point and shoot camera. This is a cheap $100 Zoom H1 mic with a, I don't know, $15 lavalier mic. I think this whole setup right here is actually $100 because this is an older version of the Zoom H1. But anyways, I just kind of taped this to the speaker, um, the DJ speaker, and just let it record the audio from there. Now, I could use a loft mic and put it on my friend and put it on the officiant, but I didn't want to do any of that. I don't want to have to bring extra mics. I didn't want to have to bring a recorder and plug it in straight to the DJ board. You know, I just want to keep it super casual. And the audio that this capture right here, honestly, sounded pretty okay. This is what I do for backup audio solution for my paid wedding gigs as well. So yeah, even though this camera has a mic jack and I was using a tiny little shotgun mic on this, I ended up not using the audio from this camera because what I got from, from the Zoom H1, taping it to the uh, DJ speaker, that's Found it better anyway, so I ended up using that. Anyways, enough talk. Here's what the final product looks like. Let me know in the comments down below what you think by the end of it. What an honor. What a privilege to be here today. We are gathered, all of us today are gathered here to witness the joining of two really special people. Promises they're going to make to each other. We get to witness those and celebrate with them. So it's a beautiful day. Right? It's sunny, it's warm, it's blue sky. Welcome everyone. Thank you again for coming. You are here uh, because you want to celebrate these two and their love story that is culminating today in this wedding. But again, thank you for having me. It's been fun getting to know you guys and hear your story. You guys are two really impressive people that both as individuals and as a couple are going to do some really great things. So I asked you guys, when did you know that you want to get married? Some people know right away. Some people it takes a little bit longer. Yutin, you said that he, when you realized that um, through so many times, so many opportunities for him to show how caring he is, how thoughtful he is, 
And Lawrence, you realized at some point that no matter what, you knew that you could talk to her about anything. The same, the same energy and time and, and, and effort you put into your schooling um, to this point is the same kind of things you're gonna put into this marriage. We love each other because first love is also true love is very rare. And so I really hope you and Lawrence will continue to love each other with all your heart and that it continues to grow stronger than ever. Therefore, with the authority committed unto me by the state of California, I declare that you are husband and wife. Lawrence, you may kiss your bride. It is my privilege to introduce to you all today, Mr. and Mrs. Chow. Didn't that look amazing? That makes me really want to shoot an entire wedding video with an iPhone 11 Pro. Of course, the trouble will be trying to find a couple willing to let you capture their entire wedding on an iPhone. So hopefully the opportunity would come. I would probably do it for free. But until then, I gotta squeeze in this quick sponsor message first. Please, don't go yet, please. I love you, don't go yet. I'm sure you heard by now, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to create beautiful and clean websites. Recently, Vivian and I launched our free filmmaking course and we created a landing page to house all five tutorials. Creating this page took us no more than 30 minutes to put together thanks to Squarespace user-friendly interface. Whether you need a website to build a portfolio or an e-commerce store, build it with Squarespace. Start your free trial today and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Jason Vong to save 10% off your website or domain. See you guys in the next video. Peace.